Hey guys, today we are going to be taking a look at how to build a beautiful little line chart like this one in React using ReCharts. So let's get started. All right, so first of all, we're going to need to npm install ReCharts. So let's do that right away. I already did that, so it's going to go really fast, but it shouldn't take long for you either. And now we basically already have everything we need to get started. As you can see, I've already prepared a little use effect here that basically just generates me some uh, random temperature and humidity data so that we can display it later. That's also how the previous example actually worked. Now, to get started, we'll actually need to, first of all, render a line chart, which unfortunately, the auto completion here in uh, VS Code at least, isn't working as fine as I'd want it to. So we're gonna need to do our imports all ourselves. So I'm just gonna import all of them right away and we'll get into what they do later. As you might imagine, the line chart is basically the foundation to actually build a chart, but it alone won't do much for us. The things that it does for us though are that we need to uh, feed it our data. In this case, this is just an array of objects. So the objects are based off of this. And then we need to basically use other components to tell our chart how to interpret that data. As you can see, it's just three numbers, the day, the temperature, and the humidity. Now, there's some extra information we can give the chart, like a width and a height of 300 pixels. Now, if we just take a look here, you can see nothing is happening yet because why would it render a chart if nothing is there to, dis uh, to be displayed, right? We basically didn't define anything yet. Let's start by actually defining the axes, starting with the x-axis. So first of all, we're going to need to define what we want to be displayed on the x-axis, which in this case is done through data key. And our data key for the x-axis is actually just day. We can also uh, define some more properties on here, but that's actually going to happen on the y-axis because we want some special data to be displayed there. So for this one, we will first of all remove the data key day because we of course don't want the same things to be uh, measured on the x and y-axis. And uh, instead, we're going to say domain. And domain is basically saying, okay, what's the lowest value you can display and what's the highest value you can display? And we're going to say, okay, our graph will be limited from 0 to 50. So it's going to start at 0 and go up to 50. That's basically most of the things we need for our axes. The only thing missing is a number so that this domain actually works because by default it's not going to know what type you give it, because you could theoretically display anything here, right? Like even a date or something. So now let's take a look at what it looks like. As you can see, we've got one axis now. The Y axis doesn't exist yet because we don't render anything. We're going to get to that shortly. But now let's do some more visual stuff first of all, which is the Cartesian grid, which makes it easier to read the graph later. And the Cartesian grid is basically just a little grid displayed on the graph so that you basically have the lines going through each of the values on your axes. And to define it, we're going to say, okay, it's going to have a stroke, so a color of gray, and it's going to have a stroke dash array of five space five. And as you can see, this basically just gives us a little dashed line right here for each of the numbers so that it's easier to read the uh, chart later on. I think it makes it look a lot prettier. Let's also add a data key for y-axis, I'll go with temperature, and now we can also see our little data displayed right here. Also, I made a typo. Now we actually see the axis in the way that it's intended to be uh, looking, from 0 to 50, and over here from 1 to 20, because we generate 20 values up here. Now let's move on by actually defining our lines on the graph, so basically the data. Our first line will need a data key again, because it will need to know what it actually displays. We'll start with the temperature, the temperature will get a stroke in, let's say, purple. The colors are, of, co of course, completely random. You could also add hex codes in here if you wanted to. I'm just not going to do that because I don't think it's necessary, but you could. And then we're going to define a stroke width of 3 because the default uh, line is really thin. And I think that the data should be a bit thicker. If you don't think so, then that's absolutely fine. And now you can see that the line actually animates. One thing I don't like though, is how it comes in from the right. So if you don't like that either, then you can say, okay, is animation active false? I'm gonna do that because I think that animation looks a bit stupid and this way it just immediately displays. And now we're just gonna add the second line, which is quite similar. We'll just say humidity in here and make it orange. And now we have two lines that already look quite nice in my opinion. 
So now you might think, okay, but how do I know which line at which? Well, you can actually add a really nice extra component in here called a legend. And you don't actually need to give the legend any information because it gets all of its information from the rest of the chart. And now it immediately says, okay, purple is temperature and orange is humidity, which I find really handy. But now you might want to actually read what the exact values are, if you hover on here, and that's done using the tooltip. So if we just try that out real quick, we can add a tooltip in here, and that tooltip is going to have a content. And for testing purpose, we're just going to make it a div real quick, containing the letter A. And if we now just hover over here, you can see we get a div with the content of A. Now, this of course isn't really enough. So what we can do is we can actually define a component. So const tooltip content builds an arrow function because as you remember components are just functions so you can of course also define them like this and it's going to get props so that we can actually access our data we can now go ahead and actually render this tooltip but what we need to first do is say okay if props dot active so this is basically um a little boolean we get to make sure that we should actually display this tooltip content because sometimes you might not want to do that and the chart is going to tell you when and when not to do it and we of course also um, want to know if there actually is data or if something hasn't loaded yet or whatever which is done using the payload prop and we can just say if both if one of these isn't there then we'll just return nothing because then we can't really render anything right Otherwise, we can say, okay, props.payload. So if we just go into inspect and console right here, you can see we've got one for each line. So as you can see, one is purple, one is orange. But if we head in here and look at our actually da actual data, you can see that both values are actually in here. So we aren't really required to um, read both these values. So we're just not going to do that because as you can see, if I highlight one of these lines, then yeah, we get both of the values. So why even bother? That's why we can say, okay, const data equals props dot payload. We'll just uh, use the first value and it contains a payload object as well. And in there we can now access all of our data. So we'll return a div and that div is going to contain three more divs containing the day. So data dot day and of course the other two values as well. So the temperature is data dot temp and the humidity is data dot humidity and now if we just head back and hover over here we can actually already see our values but it's quite hard to read because yeah as you can see it's see-through so we'll just add some inline styling because it's not really worth it to create um, a css file right now i guess and then you can just say okay i want a background of black for example and now it already looks much better. You could, of course, also add like text align or something like padding. I'll just add a padding of five pixels to make it look a bit nicer. And yeah, now you have a easily readable and, in my opinion, really nice looking graph that you can customize to your wants. Okay, so I think this is awesome and I hope you do too. But if you want to get this to the next level, then maybe you should check out this video where I'll show you how to use SAS or SCSS to improve your CSS styling, which would really improve your graphs. So, have a good day.